Making rational decisions often means thinking about small changes. Is the extra benefit I get from another purchase worth the extra cost? Will one more order for a firm be profitable? Does the extra revenue justify the additional expenditure? If a firm spends a little more money on advertising, would it increase demand sufficiently to be worthwhile? All these and many other questions revolve around the idea of the margin, the marginal change. A very useful way of analyzing marginal changes is by differentiation. In this part of the film, we concentrate on this technique, beginning by seeing how we can answer some important questions in higher education. Using some of the results of research undertaken, we focus on the larger US universities that are committed to research and to the awarding of doctorates. As you might expect, there are economies of scale in higher education. As numbers expand, the average cost per student tends to fall. But at some point, average costs begin to rise. Diseconomies of scale become significant. How can we find out the appropriate size of institution if we wish to minimize its average costs? Some research was undertaken here in the States recently and they were looking for the relationship between output and costs of production where output is the number of full-time students educated. By looking at a large number of different universities, different sizes, different costs of production, we can work out the relationship on average between output and costs. And the idea then is to say, given this cost function that we've established, what's minimum average cost? What's the number of students that we need to educate in order to minimize average cost? And we call this minimum efficient scale. But how did they work out what would be the size of university that would minimize the cost per student? Well, it can be done by differentiation. What's the relationship between the number of students studying and the average cost of educating them? The study from which this data is taken suggests that the average and marginal cost of US education varies with output as shown in the diagram. What we're going to do here is to seek to find minimum average cost, the bottom of the average cost curve sometimes known as MES, Minimum Efficient Scale. How many students does the university need to educate in order to do it at the least possible cost per student? The estimate of costs made for top research universities was given as ATC equals 80842 minus 3997.24 FTE plus 61.83 FTE squared, where ATC equals average total cost and FTE equals full time equivalent students in thousands. That's the estimate that was made looking at top research universities in the States. How can we use that estimate to find minimum average total cost? Well, we're looking for the output level where the change in ATC is zero. So we want to set to zero the derivative of the average total cost curve with respect to full-time equivalent students. That is to say, DATC by DFTE equals zero. So here, 123.66 FTE minus 3997.24 equals zero. So 123.66 FTE equals 3997.24 equals 32.324.
So 32,324 full-time equivalent students minimizes average total cost at top research US universities. We can also find minimum average total cost for what we might call a lower quality group of universities, those that focus less upon research. And the estimates of costs that were made for this group of universities was ATC equals 24189 minus 1890.16 FTE plus 57.74 FTE squared. So DATC by DFTE equals zero is what we're looking for. That is to say the point on the graph where we have minimized unit cost per student. This is 115.48 FTE minus 1890.16 equals zero. 115.48 FTE equals 1890.16. So FTE equals 16.36. So for this group of universities, MES is 16,000 360 full-time equivalent students. So average cost is minimized for this group at a rather lower level of output than for the first group. So once we've an estimate of the relationship between the number of students and the costs of education, our differential calculus enables us to find minimum average costs.